What you're looking at here is the deployment for the scenario from the Rogue Trader rulebook, the Battle at the Farm, which pits uh, a series of orcs with two leaders um, against a um, small group of space marines who are defending a farm. Um, and the objective of this scenario is for um, between these two orc leaders to spend two turns total in this building. So either one, one leader for two turns or both leaders for one turn. And then they win the scenario. And if not, then the Space Marines win. And the first rule set I want to look at is a, a rule set by Nordic Weasel Games called Renegade Scout, which is a modern rewrite of Rogue Trader. Because I'm using 15 mil and I only have a three foot by three foot table, I'm going to be using half measurements. Okay, as the game plays out, we'll draw in closer to the action, but for now I think it benefits you to have a bit more of an overall scene. I'd like to point out a few of the features. Um, this in the original scenario is a ruin, but effectively is a kind of contiguous ruin that corners off this section here. So for just the sake of having some model terrain, I'm going to use hedges here. This is a, a farmhouse building, which houses what the orcs think is some uh, valuable contraband. Uh, and the space marines know there is nothing there, but they are in a hopeless defense. This is an orchard conferring um, both visual obstruction and um, when inside but near the edge, soft cover. And this is a generator, which is uh, just blocking line of sight. This hill here, um, effectively blocks line of sight past the midway point, I'm saying, either side, depending on which direction you're looking at. Here is Throg with two squads of orcs. Here is Hruk with two squads of orcs. Here's our first two marine squads. And here is Pedro Cantor and the last marine squad. So, the first thing we do in a game of Renegade Scout is to work out the, the very first priority. The game is an I-Go, you-Go system per phase rather than per turn, so you alternate activations. So just to find out who gets the very first, we roll some dice and we add the intellect of our troops. These are both intellect 7 troops, so it's effectively a dice off. So this means the Marines get the first activation. Okay, that's the movement done. You'll see the Orcs have moved up significantly further. So there'll be no shooting. We don't have any psychers on the board, so there will be no magic phase or no psychic phase. And we don't have anyone to have in close combat or to rally. So now we are gonna switch over to the Orcs. And since the Marines went first in the first turn. Now the orcs will go first in the second turn. So they are going to uh, move up. Oh, well, actually, we're gonna move everybody. And then I will cut back. So we're going, we're going to have these five space marines fire at those orcs in the distance. The space marines are equipped with both bolters and bolt pistols, but there is no incentive to use their bolt pistols at this point. Their bolters have a range of 24 inches, um, which places them, I'll just go over this way. Um, one, two, three, four. Um, and because we use true line of sight, this Marine can't actually draw line of sight to any of these models without crossing the base of another. So we have four figures here who can shoot. Now, unlike, um, Warhammer games, rather than subtracting the ballistic skill from seven and then that being your to hit number, you simply just try and roll under your ballistic skill. So these Marines have a ballistic skill of four, so we need four or less on uh, 46. So we got three hits, I oh, say so four hits on these poor orcs over here. Now the strength of a bolter is four and the toughness of an orc is three, so we need fives or less to wound. So we get four wounds, and the armor piercing value of a bolter is one, and the orcs have flak armor, which would give them a uh, one or below uh, save, but since they will have subtracted one from that, they can't get less than one, so four orcs will die. 
Now that means this remaining orc needs to take a leadership test and they have a leadership of seven. So we need seven or less on 2d6 in order to stay in the battle. And with a nine, that means the orc is broken. And if, when we fail, sorry, um, we immediately run 2d6 inches away. So I will roll these. We, roll, we move two and a half inches back and we flee away from the enemy slash towards color. So we'll flee this way. That orc is off. Right, that is actually, I think, the end of that turn because there is no further shooting, there is no further hand-to-hand -hand combat, nor is there any psychic. And the rally for this orc over here in the distance will happen in the next turn. Okay, now the marines have priority. So that means they get to move their units first. So let's get the units moved and then we'll come back at the shooting phase. Right, giving you a slightly different view here, but I figure there's actually going to be a lot of action in this corner, so it's probably not a bad idea. Here we have our squad of marines with Pedro, who has double-timed the cross here. With that major threat of the orcs in the middle dissipated, um, the likelihood is he's going to need to reinforce this flank, so he's gone that way. Um, this marine squad has consolidated towards the hedge, I have already forgotten who started, and I think it's the Orcs' turn now. So they are going to kick off the shooting um, with this unit here. So they have... Um, this unit here is not going to hide because it wants to shoot, which means it comes out of hiding automatically each turn. You have to reapply the, the hidden status um, by hiding actively. And so they are... How far away are they? They are just out of short range, so they have uh, four shots, and they will need a, a three or less to hit. And they miss all of their shots. Then in return, this marine squad will fire back. This squad is firing at these orcs, so we are going to have... Oops, we're going to have one, two three, four bolter shots, which we will do first, needing um, fours or less. Uh, we get uh, three hits, and then we need fives or less to wound. Uh, we get three wounds, and they don't get saves, so three of them are killed. We'll fire the missile launcher, which doesn't get a bonus to hit. Um, and... Um, we'll need four or less. It hits, and it has a blast radius of uh, one inch, which is, is half inch in our measurements, which is enough to catch both of these figures. It is strength four, so needs five to wound, double ones, and it would do D3 wounds, but they've only got one each, and it is AP one, so it will actually bypass their flak armor completely. And we have another orc unit that is completely decimated. Crikey. Would you believe the orcs actually won this the last time I played it? Over on this flank, all of these orcs are more than an inch away from the border of this orchard. So as a result, uh, they can't be fired upon. It's not a case of being hidden per se, it's you know, the line of sight is obstructed. So there's no shooting on this side. Now we're going to try and rally this orc here. He should have moved 2d6 inches, um, that's another 5 inches um, away before um, we tested, but he's there. So he'll try and rally, needing a 7 or less. And he does rally. So he's um, decided that um, he's going to get back in on the action. Let's do some movement on this flank because this is going to probably be the deciding factor now that the orcs on the right flank have been uh, completely decimated. Okay, I've had to move some of these trees out of the way, but I think this is probably where the crunch is going to happen. This is Thrak, he is the orc leader, and if he can get into this bunker for two turns, then the orcs win the game, regardless of the casualties that have been inflicted on them. 
So let's see, the Marines will get the opportunity to activate in the shooting phase first. And they are clearly going to choose to activate with this group over here. There is three of them. They are within six inches and these Orcs are now within line of sight. They will get cover, but they are within line of sight. Threes or less to hit and there are three of them shooting. So, as you can't see that, they all missed. No, they didn't miss because they're in short range, they get plus one to hit. So actually this four does hit. And it will need a five or less to wound, and it wounds. And with AP one, um, it kills an orc. So let's move the closest orc out of the way. Now these orcs will return fire. There's three of them. They will need threes or less, but because they're firing at short range, they will need fours or less. And they get three hits, so they would be saving on uh, three or less. But because the uh, bolter has AP1, they're actually saving on two or less. And they managed to save two of them, so one of those marines dies. One of the major departures from Rogue Trader is how in Renegade Scout the statistics are used for slightly different things. For example, um, what was called initiative, which would be close combat order, um, is now observation, which is mostly around spotting things. Attacks is used in close combat, but is also used for characters to use their pistol more than once. So characters can be more effective in ranged combat than, than just go straight into hand to hand. So. Throg here has four attacks, and he has uh, what is effectively a plasma pistol, and he has a ballistic skill, I believe, of four. Yep, he has a ballistic skill of four, so he needs four or less to hit, and he gets two hits, and it is strength four, so he needs fives, because the space marines also only have toughness three, so fives or less. <laughs> he rolls a double six. So, uh, no luck for the Orcs this game. And that's him. Now, this group of Orcs will also fire. So we have one, two, three, four. Four Orcs, all needing threes or less to hit. And they get two hits. And then there's five to wound. Uh, one wound, and then a save of two or more, uh, two or less, sorry, and that's another marine down. Now, because they, these marines have taken more than one casualty in the shooting phase, they also need to test for their morale. Their morale is seven. Um, because Pedro Cantor is here, which is the their leader, um, he automatically gets a buff of plus one leadership, so he's leadership eight. So we need to roll, and because they're close enough, they can use his leadership. We need to roll eight or less on this 2d6. And we roll a 10, which means they fail their leadership test and they immediately run 2d6 back. And they run five and a half inches back off the board. Well, not quite off the board, but very bloody close to it. So. Throg is going to go first, and obviously he is going to run into this building. I'm going to place him on top, just to signify that he's in there. And whatever happens to these marines, they have to run 2d6 inches before they can rally. And they are within an inch of the board edge. So that means, actually, um, one, two of these marines are lost forever they exited the board edge while broken and this marine is still broken and heading in that direction. So what we've done over here is to deploy these or during the movement phase we have restructured them into open formation which means they can be um, in my half measurement world they can be two inches apart they get minus one leadership as a result. I don't think they're going to be at risk of taking fire but they need to maintain coherency and due to these obstacles and the need for this missile launcher to stay still, um, we had to spread these marines out in a bit of an odd way. 
Right, all of these orcs can make it into this building. So I think I'm going to actually remove the lid of this building. This shows us pretty much the topology of the battle at the moment. We have an orc squad here which was trying to block Pedro Cantor from getting into this building, but I, I kind of ruled that um, just getting into the building, you just move into the building and then you're in. There's no entry and exit particularly. So that did them no good at all. But we have a Throg in there, who is the orc leader. Pedro, who is the marine leader, have three orcs in there. So this is going to be, everyone in here is going to be considered in base to base with each other, I think. Right, these three orcs are going to fire at this apothecary. Threes or less. Need fives or less. Three or less. Marines, okay. We're going to have this unit of marines fire at Hruk over here. Now, one of them is in short range, so we'll do that first. He will need uh, fives or less because he would need fours, but because of short range, he gets plus one, so fives or less. He hits, he will need uh, fives or less to wound. She wounds, and then Hruk, I'm afraid, only has one wound and flak armor, so he is taken out. Rocket launcher over here, fired in and killed the two orcs out on the outside with a plasma missile and they basically had no chance at all. Um, that means these three orcs potentially um, will flee. So they need, uh, they have their leader here, so he has leadership eight, so they'll need eight or less. And with a five, they stick around for the combat. The close combat phase in Renegade Scout acts a bit like a duel, so uh, combatants will alternate roles against each other's, against their, so their own weapon skill. Um, so in this case, let's have, um, because we started the combat, uh, I get to, I as the orcs get to pick um, who fights first. So we'll have this orc fighting Pedro. So the orc will get uh, one attack at weapon skill three, uh, which means he needs threes or less to hit, and he fails. Pedro gets four attacks, uh, needing six or less, sorry, because he's really good. So all four of those hit. His power glove is strength eight, um, so he will need, th simply need uh, fives to kill. So he definitely kills that orc. That's one dead orc. Right, then we'll have um, the second orc fighting Pedro. He will need a four to hit. And he misses and Pedro now because he is fighting his second opponent only gets three attacks instead of four so still needs sixes and he gets three of them um, and then he needs fives to kill and he kills that orc this orc here will get his one attack needing fours and he misses now Pedro only gets two attacks and he only hits one, then he needs fives to kill. And he kills that orc. But now we have uh, Throg fighting. I had made a mistake there. Because Throg has more than one, both of them have more than one attack, we actually alternate it. So the first attack with Throg needs six or less, and it, it hits and his chain sword is strength four AP one. So against Pedro, he needs uh, fives, which he gets. And Pedro needs a three to save. And he doesn't save. And he has three wounds, so now he's down to two. In return, um, he fights back, but now he's only got one attack because he had four, three, two, and now he's on his fourth opponent, he only gets one attack. So he needs sixes, and a one always hits. And he then needs fives. No, uh, because he's got his power glove, um, he needs uh, anything but a six, so he does that. It does D3 wounds. Now, Throg over here has two wounds, so, if we roll a three up, then Throg is dead. So Throg takes three wounds, which knocks him out, which then means Pedro is the sole defender of the farm, 
the orcs, just though there are three sad ones looking here, are decimated completely, and the space marines have won the day.